Now, the big news today in Irish sport is that Jim Gavin, after seven years and leading the dubs to five in a row in September, has stepped down as manager of the Dublin senior football team. Delighted to be joined on the line here and off the ball by the former All-Ireland winner with Derry, broadcaster and writer Joe Brawley. Joe, good afternoon. Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks, Joe. Did it come as a shock to you, Jim Gavin stepping down? I don't think so. I mean, I think he's 48, 49. Um, the five in a row has been accomplished. You know, he has a very busy life outside of Gaelic like, football, you know, and a life of, you know, he's got a new job in Brussels. And, uh, I mean, what does six in a row mean? <laughs> and I think it's probably the right the right time for him. And, uh, you know, I'd say he's got a huge amount of interest outside of the game. You know, he's a communitarian, he's an altruist. Um, he's interested in all sorts of charitable projects. So, I mean, I have no doubt that he continue in that quiet way of his to make a very significant contribution. Uh, Joe, when we're looking at the annals of managers and when we're ranking everybody, maybe that's something you don't like to do, but I would consider him the greatest Gaelic manager of all time. Is he the, is he the greatest of all time? Is that his legacy? Uh, well, I, I, I really, I, I find those um, discussions sort of trivial. I think that what you can certainly say is that um, he came into a group where Gilroy had established a culture, a serious culture, you know, where their feet, you know, the, the boys' feet was on the ground. They were they were expected to make a contribution in their local communities, you know. And, um, I mean, one of the first things that happened with Jim was that, you know, that Jim used to fly the organ donation flight as a, as a pilot and was thick as thieves with David Hickey, you know, the transplant surgeon. Yes. And... Whenever they won the All Ireland in 2013, Jim rang me and he said, "Look, um, I had just started the Up for Life, the organ donation chat, and he said, "Look, we would like to do the, we would like to do the game, you know, using Up for Life, you know, the Up for Life game after the All Ireland, and that's what happened, you know. And uh, so I got to know him well from that point on. Obviously, we played against each other, and it was the culture that he established in the group, you know. I mean, I spoke to John Costello this week." I was getting some figures from the Dublin County Board of Expenditure on teams and all of that. And they said to me, you know, we've never been able to get him to claim expenses. He has never claimed expenses. And uh, you can see that the culture in the group is one of their grown-ups. They're, they're given autonomy. You know, it's not one of these controlling environments. And you see that, that in the way they perform in the field as individuals, serious respect for men. You know, Jack McCaffrey's a doctor. You know, one of the one of the important points that Jim always says that work is most important. Football is only secondary. You know, what you do with your lives outside of football is much more important. And you see that, and you see that that um, sort of maturity in that group, which is unusual, which is unusual. Uh, and you see, you know, that for example, you've got Dean Rock who works with disabled children. Michael Darren McCauley now started this inner city trust initiative. Just on Thursday of this week, I, I was privileged to be invited to take the last day of a 12-week program in, in Ballybuck for men who suffer from drug and alcohol addictions, homelessness, isolation, you know, and it's a health, fitness, nutrition, cookery program, you know, where they've got a chef in. And over the course of the 12 weeks, the 24 uh, men of all sorts of different ages, were brought back to life, you know, they were, you know, by the end of it, they were motivated, they had, they had you know, formed firm friendships, they had learned to cook, you know, and uh, those social bonds are extremely important, but right in the middle of that, of course, the Dublin GAA, um, they, they are heavily invested in it, Michael Dara McCauley is there given the last day of, of the seminar, etc., and these are the quiet things that they do all the time, you know, and uh, so that that culture where you've got serious respect for men who are playing for the right reasons and who are you know, able then to perform on the field the way they do because their feet are on the ground. You know, it's only football in the end. And uh, you know, that's been the most impressive thing about them, you know, that culture that's been created. Because up on the end, Dublin teams were boom and bust. You know, I mean, Kerry and Tyrone were beating them up for fun during the noughties. And uh, it was 16 years between 95 and... Gilroy's All-Ireland in 2011. So the big difference was that change in culture. 
Is this uh, cyclical as well, though, Joe? You know, Dublin, they're not going to win All-Irelands forever. Is Jim maybe, step, maybe stepping down at, at, the, at the right time? I mean, he's nothing to prove. As you say, what does six mean? For the, for the, for the, for the new guy, uh, like, is it difficult now for the players to, to keep the hunger? Uh, could cracks start appearing? Will other counties around the country feel a, a pep so, in their step today? Because it's part of a healthy, balanced lifestyle with the Dubs, uh, they, they, you know, I don't think they're going to have any difficulties with motivation. In fact, I think that next year they'll probably play with greater freedom. And I fully expect them, you know, to play better next year and to win the all Ireland next year. But I do think that, for example, I think that Kerry's time has come at five in a row of minor all Irelands, And with David Clifford set to become, you know, one of the greatest ever Gaelic footballers. I mean, I don't know if you saw his ludicrously outstanding and sometimes hilarious performances in the Kerry Championship this year where all you could do was sort of clap your hands in delight. But Kerry are coming, there's no doubt. And uh, Dublin, I think, perhaps win one, but certainly win next year, possibly the following year. But I think that that, 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 will, that will probably be it then. Um, because other teams are going to start to catch up. Is that dominance good for the game, Joe? Well, I mean, was Kerry's eight All Irelands in eleven years good for the game? I mean, the reality is this: that there are only very few counties. That don't, there are only very few counties who genuinely participate in the All Ireland. I mean, my father's fond of saying All Irelands are for Kerry and Dublin. <laughs> I mean, Kerry came through once and won one, and it was almost miraculous. You know, people couldn't believe it, and uh, and it was terrific and all of that. But I mean, everyone knew that wasn't going to be sustained. Uh, and it's just like the hurling. You know, hurling All Irelands are for Kilkenny and Tipperary. And, you know, unless and until we have a radical restructuring of uh, the GAA. So, for example, you know, you could say, OK, well, look, let's, let's abandon the, the British-drawn county, county boundaries, create 32 equal population areas, centralise the funding, create a transparent govern, governing structure and administer funds equally throughout the, these 32 new teams. You know, you could do that, for example, you could try that. I think it would probably work. It would take a while to bed in. And it would certainly invigorate the game and create a, a proper sort of GA democracy. But as things stand, we've got to face it. I mean, there's a 1.5 million population in Dublin. So on the law of averages, you know, strong Dublin teams are going to come around more regularly than a strong Derry team or a strong Tyrone team. 